Good afternoon and welcome to the Lebanon Senior Center Cinco de Mayo celebration. We're doing a cooking demo today and we are going to have a little bit of fun. Um, and it doesn't require a lot of expense, nor does it require you to necessarily do a lot of cooking. This is kind of a cookless one. I know we're in for a little warm weather today. At least it's going to feel warm considering um, we're coming out of winter and the days are heating up a little sooner than we are used to here in Lebanon. But in celebration of Cinco de Mayo, today we are going to be making a blended strawberry margarita, no alcohol. Sorry, can't do that here. Um, what you do in your own home, I don't need to know about. Um, so this is a mock margarita and uh, super simple to do. It's also just a refreshing, fun treat maybe to have the summer um, as we're beginning to gather together with folks, especially if you're vaccinated, start having those small gatherings. This might be a fun drink to make up. You don't not need a lot of big equipment. In fact, today, I'm going to try to do it without a blender because, you know, we don't have one here, but we do have our immersion blender, not a traditional stand-up blender. Um, my only concern is the ice cubes. My ice cubes might be chunkier than I would normally like, but we're going to give it a shot. Normally, I bring in my little small blender from home. Um, we're going to go this way today, hopefully give the bus drivers a little refreshing afternoon treat uh, when they come in on break. We're also going to be doing a salsa. So again, this is a fun thing to do for a possible small outdoor gathering on a warm afternoon with friends. I'm also going to show you how you can serve it up so maybe we aren't necessarily double dipping or touching each other's food. And uh, I think that's going to be important as we get into the summer months. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to do for our mock margaritas is to get a lime wedge. Um, I rolled my lime a little bit on the countertop to get it softened so the juices would come out easier. And get a fun little glass if you've got one. And you're just going to go around the rim of the glass. Makes for a fun presentation, an initial sweet treat here. Instead of putting salt on the rim, we're going to do a little bit of sugar. So I've got some lime on the rim. And in just a small dish of, small dish, I put just a little bit of sugar. There we go. So we're going to dip our glass upside down in it. And you can see we kind of have that nice crystal, sugar crystal edge. So we would do that with all of our glasses, make it kind of a fun presentation, make it feel a little extra special if you were having a guest, or you know what, just a little extra special for yourself, you know. Just a little evening fun. I think we've had to get pretty creative creating our own fun in the past year. So why stop now? We'll just keep it going. There we go. Oop. All right, I'm going to stop at two glasses because you don't need to watch me do that for a while. So in this pitcher, or you can do it in your blender if you've got one, I have one and a quarter cups water and I've got about 20 ice cubes. Um, they're in there, they're hanging out. I did also add uh, just a little bit of sugar, about a third of a cup of sugar is in here. I found it was helping kind of create some friction as I was starting to pre-blend the ice cubes just to try to make it a little bit easier since I wasn't working with a traditional blender. Um, this recipe is going to be posted in the notes and you can certainly downgrade it. If you are just making this for yourself, you know, you just use a couple ice cubes in a blender. Just use a scoop of some of the other ingredients that we're going to be sharing. One of those is limeade. You can get limeade concentrate in the freezer section. Mine's been sitting out for a few minutes, so it's going to be really easy to get out. So doing this partially thawed really helps because it comes out of the can a lot easier. And you can sit there and squish it into chunks. I'm just trying to prevent that big backsplash tidal wave happening. There we go. Got it in there. Of course, now I gotta find a place for it. There we go. And then you need some, uh, about 16 ounce. So, all of these strawberries are supposed to go in here. Ooh. So, unsweetened frozen strawberries. You want them frozen because that way it helps keep the drink frozen. It won't melt all that ice that we're trying to create. Um, you can have some fresh strawberries set aside as a garnish on your cups. That would be really cute. Um, and so yeah, 
So sugar, the water, the limeade, and our unsweetened strawberries, and a bunch of ice cubes. That's what's going in here. Now I'm going to take this handy dandy immersion blender and I'm going to go to town. I am going to turn off the recording for this uh, just because it makes a really loud noise and you don't want to just listen to that for a minute. So I'll be right back. All right, so I just blended, blended, blended away. There's the evidence on the end of the immersion blender. It didn't work too bad, especially when she got the water in there. That ice definitely is a bit of a challenge. I know there's still some chunks at the bottom. I couldn't quite see through the red slush. So to keep them from dropping in the glass, I'm going to put the lid back on my pitcher here. Hopefully this works as a slush. Oh, I think I got it too thick. If you do get it too thick, you can certainly add some water to thin it back out. Or if you happen to have a handy dandy ladle, you can treat your pitcher like a punch bowl. There you go. There you go. I mean, heck, I just eat that with a spoon. You can certainly put a little straw in there. You can certainly uh, do that strawberry garnish, as we said, and cut one, set it on the edge of the glass so they know what kind of, you know, mocktail you are serving. Or you can even do your lime wedge and stick it on the side. It would be super, super cute just to let them know. Or you could get a skewer and put a strawberry and a lime wedge on it. That way, if they're like me and they like it a little extra tart, they could use that lime wedge and just drizzle a little extra lime right on board. Alrighty. So that is item number one today. That is our mocktail. Of course, you can get those all lined up and on a tray. Would be delicious. And I'm going to scoop project number one aside. And now we're going to switch over to that salsa. I know a lot of people, when you say the word salsa, they instantly think of a lot of tomatoes. I know for some of our senior friends, tomatoes are a challenge. All that acid can really mess with medications, heartburn, acid reflux, really hard, even if you really like a tomato. So today we're doing a different salsa. We're doing a black bean and corn salsa. So black beans are the star of the salsa, great for fiber, great for protein, and Really, salsa is just a fun salad. Usually you eat by scooping it onto an hors d'oeuvre of a cracker or toast or some, you know, a taco or something like that. So it's a condiment slash salad. I don't know. Salsas are just fun. And you can really change them up. You do not have to have tomatoes in a salsa. I know, mind blowing. You certainly can. Um, this one, there's tomatoes in here, but you don't have to put as many. You don't have to put any at all. And the same goes for a lot of the other ingredients. You're making a salsa, make it your own, okay? What things do you like to put in there? The biggest part about it is usually they're fresh, kind of zippy, um, just really kind of full of vegetables or fruits, really just kind of adding an extra flair to whatever you're eating them with or putting them on. So black beans are the start of our dish, and then corn. Put a cup of corn. I'm using frozen corn. I do like frozen corn better than canned. You can certainly use canned corn, but I'm one of the people that thinks it has a little tinny texture. And the frozen corn is kind of you know, picked with the height of the season, and uh, it always just tastes a little fresher to me. Okay, I'm just going to put it all in there. And of course, if you're not a corn person, you don't have to. But there we go. So there's our um, can of black beans, and we'll say it's a cup. But I could probably put about a cup and a half, two cups of corn into this particular batch. Then I've got a little mariflot, a little trifecta of vegetables here. Um, I have red bell pepper that I've already diced up. That's going in, and I've got some red onion. I love the colors that a salsa has, just all the liveliness. Then I've got Oh, about a half a cup of cilantro. There we go. Shooing that in there. Get everybody in there. A pre chop so you didn't have to sit here and boredly watch me do that. Of course, 
so that I have my hand up. There we go. So again, that is a uh, sweet red pepper, uh, red onion, uh, cilantro, and a green onion. If you want it zippy, if you want to add that spicy kick, you can certainly get a jalapeno or two or three, whatever your preference is, or whatever spicy pepper you like, and get that diced up and in your salsa. I'm working with a mixed crowd today, and a lot of them are into big spicy things or can't do the spicy for various reasons. So I'm going to skip that. We do have some hot sauce in the fridge, so if they want to add some zip to their individual servings, they can do that. And I'll show you how to um, make that easier for your guest in just a minute. Um, so we are also going to add in and my favorite thing, garlic. So I've got two cloves of garlic. So in my world, I'm just going to say one pint gigantic spoonful of garlic. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, you know, a little black pepper. You know, if you like a lot, you can certainly add a lot more. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. And again, you can skip the salt altogether. I just want a little dash in there for the sake of it. And then lime juice. So that lime that we didn't finish using earlier in our mixed drink. If you have some left over, you can squeeze it in. Or you can always cheat. I always have one of these little lime juice containers in my fridge because I like lime on a lot of things. The, li the lime, <laughs> I almost called it a lemon. The lime adds that little citrus kick, especially if you don't want to use tomatoes or can't use tomatoes. You can get a little acid into it, a little punch um, to your little sour taste buds with a little bit of lime. Also helps keep it fresh. So we've got just about everything in here. You see this lovely pile of tomatoes sitting in the back, I'm sure. This is like a lot of tomatoes, right? You don't have to use all of these. The recipe calls for, what is it, one medium tomato or cup of tomatoes. Well, you can use that, you can use more, you can use less. I'm actually going to start with about half of them. And then somewhere, there it is, I've got a spoon. I'm starting with half because, you know, when you're trying to stir salsa, sometimes it's fun trying to keep all the kids in the bowl. So I'm going to start with half and I'm going to start mixing all of these ingredients together. There we go. Just trying to make sure that color it's all mixed up together. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest. Because we are fortunate as much as they, we have some resistance to spicy around here. Um, luckily, most folks have, can have tomatoes in a, in some quantity or really like them. So there we go. I think that's pretty well mixed. So here is a look. Let's see if I can aim it at the camera. There we go. At our delicious black bean and corn salsa. You know, you saw the vegetables we added in. You could certainly, again, make this your own. Add more bell pepper if you like bell pepper. Add less. If there's something you don't like, swap it out. Really play with those vegetables, especially as gardening season's kicking up. What vegetables do you have in your garden that need to get used up? What's something that you used part of in a recipe last night, but now it's sitting in the fridge and you don't know what to do with it? Maybe think if you can add it to a salsa to add to another meal. Fun to add. Salsas are fun to add on top of a chicken, fish, all kinds of things. So give it a try. Now, as I promised, that other tip on serving your salsa. So if you are doing a get together, just like we served our beverages in individual cups, you can also do that with your salsa. So instead of everyone dipping out of one big communal bowl, you can switch it up here and serve your salsas also in small cups. This again will let them add a little hot sauce if they want that kick, uh, hot sauce, sriracha, anything with that a little spicy tone if they want to, without adding it to a big bowl. Or this lets, you know, let's face it right now, a lot of folks are still worried about the pandemic. Sharing a big united bowl of food is, you know, might be challenging um, to keep it safe for everyone or make them feel comfortable that it's safe. So serve up a bunch of individual sauces in a cup. 
And then they can, you know, scoop out some chips onto their plate. They can have their salsa and their chips on their own individual plate, and they can feel safe and comfortable enjoying your gathering where everyone's eating the same thing, but maybe not out of the same bowl. <laughs> All right, everybody, we hope you have a great Cinco de Mayo. We hope you enjoy the little fiesta in a cup that is the salsa. I'm sorry, all those colors look like a party to me. Be blessed. Take care. Bye-bye.